It's Toronto's podcast on the Canada's Podcast Network. Welcome to Canada's Podcast. Uh, I have the pleasure today of speaking with Daniela Calloway. Daniela is a veteran PR and communications professional, writer, and tech startup founder. She's spoken at conferences around the world, walked A-list celebrities down red carpets, and broken world records. Calloway is a yogi, has three children, and splits her time between Toronto and Prince Edward County. Her latest venture, Book and Brunch, a tech platform for book clubs, is on a mission to reconnect the world in real life through books and food. So I'm so excited to hear more about um, both Book and Brunch and your PR agency. Um, but welcome to Canada's podcast, and I'm, I'm so glad you could be with us today. Thanks so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. So why don't you start, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and what you do. Uh, so right now, most of my time, a lot of my time is focused on my startup. I've never had, never worked in tech uh, before this. And it's, so it's very fast paced. And we're in the process of um, beginning to prepare to raise our first round of funding. So that's kind of a big deal. Um, but yeah, I've been, I say, you know, I'm a 20 plus year entrepreneur. I started like my own gigs at like 11 years old and I never really stopped. Uh, I did have jobs here and there, but I've always um, had my own ventures, whether it's like a lemonade stand or, um, you know, helping, helping shovel the driveway or mow the lawn, whatever it was, I would just get into it. Um, and so I had my PR agency for uh, 15 years ish. And um, most recently, about a year ago, launched uh, my, my book and brunch, our tech startup. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my jam. That's so awesome. Tell us a little bit about Book and Brunch. Yeah, so Book and Brunch is a book and food experiences marketplace. So on one side, we have, um, you know, hosts who want to host book club meetings or book club experiences. And on the other side, we have venues who want to host them. So we connect those, those two parties. Um, it is free to join. Anybody can join. So our members love that every event is hinged around a book because books are really amazing icebreakers um, and great conversation starters. Our, our hosts love that they're making some money just reading, meeting, and eating. Um, our hosts make between $50 and $500 per experience that they host, depending on what they're, what they're hosting. And then our venues create a listing, um, just kind of like an Airbnb listing of their set menus, their restaurant, and then they can begin accepting group dining reservations really easily. So that's how it works. Um, the sort of, that's the technical piece, but why we started it is, um, because, cause I, I really had no intention of having <laughs> a tech startup. This is how my life is. I just, <laughs> um, it's true. But I, a few years back, my sister, uh, was in a depression, um, and she was not leaving the house and it was a really, it was very bad. It was a very dark place. And so I said, you know, you have to do something that forced yourself out like create a date with yourself like I don't care what it is so she started this book club she called it book and brunch because she's like oh I want to check out a different restaurant every month she curated the whole thing and then within a year two really spectacular things happened the first was that she was completely transformed like it was it skyrocketed her out of that depression just that simple ritual once a month of meeting reading and eating and then the second thing that happened was that book club which was originally five people ballooned to over a thousand twelve hundred maybe wow. and yeah so word was spreading really quickly um and pe what people loved was that they showed up there was no awkward exchange or splitting of the bill, like all the money she did via e-transfer in advance. So you would just show up, there'd be a beautiful set menu, gorgeously curated experience, and it was really plug and play for people. Um, and so when I saw those two things, more importantly, the transformation in my sister, like that was a, that was a huge deal for me. Um, and then some of the work I'd done in the marketplace space on the PR side, really inspired me. So one of my clients was Turo, um, which is like Airbnb, but for cars, fantastic company, fantastic uh, uh, tech company out of San Francisco. And I was started to think like, I, I, I want to be able to empower other people to host their own experiences. And if, if we can help like one other person, just one, 
one other person feel less lonely, feel more connected, find their people. Um, that's actually the work I want to be doing. So we set about to, to build it and we created a platform that had uh, all the functionality that we needed that the other platforms didn't have ability to pay out the host ability to pay out the venue uh, making the event planning piece like super easy because if you go to like plan a group meal for say 20 people and you want to set menu you got to call all the venues you got to negotiate your food costs so we've eliminated those barriers because our platform's preloaded with all the set menus you just choose the one you want to request and uh, awesome. and the rest goes yeah so that's <laughs> that's the story of book and brunch how it came to be that's wonderful so uh, how many how many people have you helped now like how many members I mean, we have, we have thousands and thousands. We don't reveal our exact number yet because we are fundraising, so wonderful. Yeah. but, but there are, what's cool and interesting is that they're spread across like 40 cities globally. So there's members in LA, there's members in London, there's members in Scotland, there's members in Australia and Tokyo. And so we have all these people who are sort of waiting, um, to, until we properly scale into those markets right now we're hyper focused on um getting getting density in toronto um, a lot of our community is already in toronto but like really getting a ton of density here getting it right and then sort of um going scaling from there so For that's sure. the plan are you in any other cities across across canada or yep um so toronto's our biggest market but then we have edmonton ottawa Montreal, yeah. um, Winnipeg. There's a few others. I've got to, I've got to check. We definitely yeah. have members in Vancouver, but in terms of like active events, most active events are in Toronto at, at this stage. Cause we are a, a two woman bootstrapped startup. Right. So, so is your sister still involved or? Uh, oh yeah. She's my co-founder. She's, she's CEO co of the company. She's, uh, she's more involved than, than I am because I still, <laughs> you know, I still have some, I have PR as well. I'm juggling some, some things. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're in it. We are in it to win it. So this year, once we raise our, our round, it's going to be all systems, uh, all systems go to help spread it even, even further. That's so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, have to, I'll have to attend. Something. Yeah, I'll have to attend absolutely. Today. I'm in, I'm in Grimsby, but, um, not too far away. So it sounds really nice. You could always start one in your area. That's the whole point. We want to encourage anyone to host. Um, and it doesn't have to be really complicated. Yeah. So anyone anything. can be a host and then... Anyone can be a host. Yep. And really, you're involving your community and you're making a difference, an impact on um, your local business, yep. right? 100%. I'll have to talk more. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Make I have a, the next question I have for you. I, I just wanted um, to ask you, do you think entrepreneurs are wired differently? Like, what do you think... Um, That's a great question. And as like a lifelong entrepreneur, because I, I, again, I have had jobs, I, you know, but I, yes, I do think we're wired differently. I, I think um, we're builders. So we, there's like, in, for me, there's an insatiable hunger to create something that is of service and is of value. You can certainly do that when you work, you know, in a corporation or in a company, Um but I think, you know, we're, we're less, or sorry, like we're, we're into risk more where, um, yeah, I do think we're wired differently. I don't know. It's like, for me, I, I love the idea that I can, I, we get to create and build um, something that feels very true and authentic to our, our vision and, and our, ourselves yeah. when, cause I have worked at, at places and when you work, you know, for someone else's vision, um, it can all, it can be meaningful. It can be spectacular, but it's someone else's vision. So that's a different sort of thing. Um, and a, a lot of my close friends are entrepreneurs and it's such a great question because I started one of my first like real businesses. I was, I had a restaurant business. It was called Big Burger. Uh, it was, it was a fast food, old school burger joint. I'm now a vegetarian, but I had that business for seven years. And during that time, I was like in my early twenties. I was a kid. I knew nothing uh, about anything. I just jumped right in and I was like, oh, I'll figure this out. I think at the time, Britney Spears had a restaurant and I was like, if Britney Spears can do it, I can do it. But what's interesting is that none of my friends at the time, right, early 20s, had, were entrepreneurs. All of them had jobs. And those friends from that era, I, they're not really around as much. It became, it was very different because I was working, or I was working around the clock. Yeah. And they were out clubbing and partying. And I was just, I had my, a restaurant to run. 
So it, you know, that was the first time I think to answer your question when I realized, oh, actually we are, we're, it's, it's a little bit different. You don't, you don't quite understand me and maybe I don't quite understand you. I don't know. Yeah. So there was some, there was some growing apart um, that had, that, that happened in that, in that time. We're absolutely wired differently. That's yes. really interesting. Um, so next question, I know you're working out of, um, out of Toronto. What do you think the benefits are of doing business in Toronto? What oh my you- God. I mean, Toronto is the best city in the world, yes, right? <laughs> straight, straight talk. I mean, I was born in the former Czechoslovakia. So I come, we came to Canada with nothing, not the language, not a penny to our names. Right. Yeah. So Toronto is like, okay. So there's a number of reasons why having a business in Toronto is a huge advantage. Um, the talent pool is incredible, right? Especially in tech, because you've got Kitchener Waterloo right there. You've got those, um, those, those schools. Uh, the multiculturalism and diversity. Like, I actually think that that's where the best kind of work comes from when you are collaborating with people who come from different places, different cultures. Um, just the entire ecosystem, incredibly supportive. You know that whole cliche that like, oh, Canadians are so nice. Yeah, we are. Yeah, and we also, su- <laughs> yeah, and we also support each other. And I, we actually feel that support as a startup in the ecosystem in, in Toronto. Um, and then like a million other reasons why it's the bomb, the food scene, yeah. uh, just so many incredible scenes. Like it's like this, you know, it's like New York, but nicer and smaller. Mm-hmm. That's what I was, that's what I think. Um, and it's just a great uh, hub for any international business. That's how I feel. The Canadian, the government's also really supportive of startups who want to export, who want to scale. Um, and maybe that happens in other cities, but I feel like tr- also in tech, Toronto's like having a scene right now. Like there's so many new startups. There's so, there's a flurry of activity. Uh-huh. So yeah. thrilled that that's, that's our home base. So do you have an office? Do you have like a, an office base in Toronto? Yeah, we do. We have a beautiful um, open concept loft space that we also host events in. Oh, um, cool. It's in the Junction, which is like my favorite neighborhood. So it's not downtown, but it's in a neighborhood. Um, yeah, yeah, we have a space. Uh, we love it. It's, awesome. it's yeah, great place to meet people in real life. Our whole thing is connecting in real life, right? Mm-hmm. So that was important to us. Sure. So next question I have for you, uh, some of our best ideas come when we least expect them. And I know you mentioned that you're a yogi. Um, so I'm just wondering like what kind of things that you do uh, to disconnect and, and find those great ideas? Yeah, I mean, I, I practice yoga, of course. I work out. Um, I do a lot of walking. So for I'd like to take walking meetings. I took that one from Ariana Huffington. Yeah. Um, you know, if I need to do a 40 minute meeting, like I would love if we could just walk and talk and also the kinetic energy when you, when you walk, Mm -hmm. it, it changes the meeting. Like if you take the same meeting in a room and you take the same meeting and we're walking around downtown Toronto or, or even in the junction, it's just a different energy that's injected. Uh, So I do a lot of walking. I do meditation. Um, I also paint uh, for myself. I write, I do writing. I write a thousand words a day. Oh. Um, I have a weekly newsletter that goes out on uh, Wednesdays. It's called Dear Daniela. It's an ask me anything. And that actually, I love that. It's like, there's nothing attached to it. I, it's literally just from my, from my heart. It's a life letter. So I'll often give like a tidbit. I do a lot of reading. Of course I read uh, every single day. So often from some of the books that I'm reading, I'm inspired and I'll just share that back. But then if people have actual questions about PR or marketing or anything, yeah. um, then I'll answer that as well. So those are just some of the ways, but yeah. That's awesome. So dear Daniela is a blog. That you have? It, it's just an email, um, email. newsletter. Yeah, it's about oh, yeah. 300 words or less. It's usually, people tell me they really like it. I don't know. I, I love it. It's a great exercise for me. Uh, on my Instagram, which is the Kellaway, you can sign up through the link there and then you can ask me anything. And what I do is I, I pose the question. It's anonymous, so you can ask anything. I pose the question and then I answer it. Um, but lately, people weren't asking questions, so I just started to write whatever called to me and yes. people seem to, people seem to like it. Um, but also giving like kind of Cole's notes on some really kick-ass books, um, which I think people find helpful. So, yeah, 
No, that's that. awesome. I'm gonna have to check that out after. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm also I I love writing, so it's it's interesting that that's an outlet for you. Oh yeah, huge outlet. It's it has a- been since I've since I've been a little girl reading and and writing. Mm-hmm. I also like now being in um my entire world. So much of my world is books in the book community. Um. And I knew this a long time ago, but readers are writers are readers are writers. So if you are a voracious reader, you're most likely a writer. If you're a voracious writer, you're also, you can't be an excellent writer without being a reader. So it's like those two things are like, you know, linked. It's the one and the same. It's a cycle. So um, that's why I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of reading. It just feeds itself. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, So... Uh, tell me about the vision that you have for your business. And I know you've talked a little bit about expanding uh, internationally, yeah. but um, if you could kind of expand upon that vision and where you see your business in the next kind of five years. Absolutely. Um, so we, you know, we're the world's first book club platform that's helping people connect in real life. There's a lot of places to go online to connect for book clubs we're making it easy to do it. Um, the reading, meeting and eating part. And we're also helping local restaurants, which is fill their seats. Right. So in our vision of it, there's thousands of these gatherings happening all over the world every week. Um, and we get really powerful feedback. This is what keeps me going because as I'm sure, you know, startup life is not, um, a cakewalk. It's, it's very, it can be very challenging, um, especially when you're bootstrapping. But when the community says things like, you know, this is better for me than therapy, or I, you know, met my best friend at a book and brunch, or every single time I come, it's like so meaningful to me. I mean, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. And I, it's so important. Like, and what we realize in this journey is that people are really actually aching for meaningful conversation, true connection, um, to find their people, you know, outside of work and outside of their family and outside of like going to a bar or whatever, like and how outside you, of social media, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which, Everything. you know, as, as social media is not real, like no. it's just not, I mean, even my own feed, it's always like the best version of me. Right. <laughs> um, right now I'm actually not wearing any makeup. So like, that's awesome. the real me. <laughs> Except for I have a little bit of lip tint here, purple, because it matches my and purple you look hair. Gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you. But anyway, the, po- the point all. the point being is like when we we did this tour and we visited our brookies, that's what we call our community, um, in these different cities, and <clears throat> asking them and talking to them and hearing from them, like it's a, a majority of our community is women, and a, a lot of them are like, yeah, I need this. Like, thank you. I just w- I need an authentic way to connect. So. In five years, I would say uh, we're going to definitely land on funding. We're working on um, a celebrity ambassador, investor, strategic investor, which will land. Uh, and then we're going to scale across Canada and then the U.S. and then the U.K. And then from there, the other international, uh, international countries. But yeah. our focus is Canada first because that's where we're based. Also, great literary hub. Um, and then New York and then London. So, so exciting. <laughs> Yeah. That's yeah. Wonderful. We have huge, we have huge dreams and ambitions. I also have like uh, a, a number of really uh, interesting ideas around uh, connecting people in a different kind of way as well, which would be sort of an offshoot. We also have a line of merchandise coming, t-shirts, totes, um, things that our brookies have talked about and, and we think could be interesting. So yeah, all kinds of things. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so what do you think is the greatest challenge that you faced in your business to date? Because I know as entrepreneurs, we're always faced with, uh, yeah, the, the hard times, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, it, it changes just like, uh, it's, it's like, not unlike parenthood where you have these ebbs and flows and waves where you're like, I'm rocking it. And then you're like, oh my God, why did I do this? I'm never going to survive. Um, so very similar. And so right, right now in this season, in this particular moment, I would say that our challenge is, uh, you know, preparing and positioning ourselves uh, for venture capital for VCs. Like, Four percent of VC money goes to female founders. So let me just say that again: four percent 
only to 4%. Women. Correct. 4% yeah. to women. Um, so when you are building a product for women, by women, I, I mean, we have men in our platform, 100%. We have hosts in our platform, um, hosts that are men, but 88% of our community is women. So it's, it's mostly women. The men who are in are like, I love it. Best way to meet yeah, like, right? a woman. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so um, it can be challenging. It is challenging to communicate your vision, your product, your, your product market fit and having, you know, um, an investor understand and take you seriously as a business when it's a, something that they themselves are like, I don't get this. What is yeah. this? I wouldn't use it. So maybe that challenge. Um, but I know we're going to overcome it because there's a lot of badass investor women out there. Um, and, and, and we're working th through that. Yeah. I would also say like personally, um, you know, not having uh, been a, had a tech company before, I think the technical piece is a bit of a challenge for us. Like we have a really uh, s strong sales, marketing, branding kind of background between the two of us and, and in our team. We, have, we do have an amazing CTO, but uh, for us not being technical founders, owning a tech company sometimes can be a challenge in terms of understanding what the repercussions of a, of a certain iteration you know, might be for us. So. Navigating that, right? As, exactly. as leaders, like navigating something that you're foreign to and trusting someone else with it. Yes. Difficult. And it's, it's all brand new, right? We, you know, I asked my sister, my co-founder, I was like, do we, who, you know, we're talking about direct, direct competitors. We certainly have a number of competitors who are kind of like, uh, you know, close, but there's no one actually out there that does exactly what we're doing mm -hmm. exactly in this way that connects in this way that offers the set menus and all this. So I was like, when you don't have that, it, it's like you're building something brand new and yeah. that's tricky. There's a lot of education there, you know, to explain how it works and, and all of that. So um, no benchmark. That's crazy. That's right. That's right. So, I mean, the thrill, that's the thrill. That's the thrill it. of it though, right? Like you, every day is a new, a new learning um, and a new experience. And I think that's why I did it. Like I had, I've been doing PR for so many years and like, I'm brilliant at it. Um, and oh. which is great, but like I book and brunch presented a whole wave of awesome challenges and new learnings. So I'm all in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to shift gears a little bit. If you could go back in time, what kind of advice would you give your 20 year old self? Oh, great question. Um, <laughs> I would say to my 20 year old self, it's going to be okay. Yeah. I would say you got what it takes. Um, and I would say this one's for, taken from my sister. Don't let them take your juice. Yeah. <laughs> so the don't let them take your juice is like kind of about knowing your worth. It's about knowing your value. It's about be, go, being confident in your position. And it's about, um, you know, it's also about boundaries. It's, a, it's about so many things. So I would say, I would say those things. Um, and, and maybe I would tell her to, she was very distracted, that 20 year old girl. I would tell her to um, f like to kind of find her North star and folk hyper focus, hyper focus on, on the thing that you're, you're, you're driving for. Mm -hmm. So on the topic of that kind of advice, what's the best advice that you ever received from somebody else? Hmm. Best advice. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. Okay. Small, consistent action is, can be more powerful than, you know, spurts here and there of like really big stuff. So like the idea that, um, you know, so let's say there's a task or there's something you have to do that you hate that you're just like, I don't want to do this. If you just commit to working on it for five minutes every day, because, you know, five minutes is just a little bit over the amount it takes you to brush your teeth. It's not that long. So psychologically, you're thinking, okay, I can, I can do this thing for five minutes. It's just five minutes. Set the timer for five minutes to do the thing I really don't want to do, the, whether it's your taxes or whatever it is mm -hmm. that you're, you've been putting off. Um, chip away a little bit. So like uh, taking small, consistent action, but daily uh, can be a really powerful tool. So that's been some good, good advice and good perspective. Um, yeah. I love it. 
Thank you for that. Um, okay, so now we're going to move into our rapid fire questions uh, kind of section of the interview. So for these questions, they're going to be kind of off the wall and don't think too much about them. Just say whatever comes, pops in your head first, okay? Perfect. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, cool. Um, if you weren't doing what you're doing now for work, what would you be doing instead? I'd probably be chasing like a Hollywood dream as an actress or something. Ooh. <laughs> something ridiculous and unattainable. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, this one is really important for you. So I'm interested to hear what you're going to say. What book are you currently reading and what would you recommend to our viewers? Mm. So I'm currently, I always have two books on the go. I am currently reading uh, Stephen Hawking's The Universe in a Nutshell. Oh my gosh. That's the weirdest thing. Look what I have underneath my book. <laughs> Isn't that weird? That's, That's crazy. crazy. It's like propping up my laptop right now. That's the strangest thing. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it's a bit, it's very different from what I typically read. I, I just kind of went, went for it, uh, but fascinating and brilliant. I love like reading something that you normally wouldn't. Um, so I, I'm always kind of challenging and pushing myself. So I'm reading that. Um, and I just finished Loving What Is by Byron Katie, which is just this brilliant book about four questions that you can sort of ask yourself that ter can turn situations around. It's really fascinating. Um, and it's a lot about sort of processing uh, any kind of negativity or things assumptions and feelings you have around certain situations so brilliant um i'm just gonna but, write that down you said loving what is yeah loving what is loving what is mm, i like that title mm -hmm. byron katie byron katie um great and powerful book uh but i'm trying to think those are those are both uh non-fiction i'm trying to think of a fiction one that i just read that i love i mean uh brian o'malley's uh, scott pilgrim Mm -hmm. the, the graphic the graphic novel series I started my year reading that six books uh they're short though so and that was brilliant I love a good graphic novel as well um and I actually read it because my kids were reading it and I was like you know what I want to know what my kids are reading and uh brilliant genius he's hilarious laugh out loud <laughs> laugh out loud so if you like a good graphic novel uh Scott Pilgrim love definitely. it definitely mm -hmm. awesome yeah um next question are you a morning or a night person Hmm. I, it, it changes to be honest right now. I'm a morning person, but I, actually since my kids came, I kind of had to adjust and become a morning person, uh, you know, getting them ready for the, for the bus and all that. Um, yeah, yeah I'm definitely a morning person now, but before the kids, I was a night person for sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, it's different points in your life, right? <laughs> yeah. I call, I call it like the seasons of life, you know, sometimes you're in this season. And so in this current season, I am a morning person and I enjoy it. And when you're in Jamaica, maybe you'll be a morning person. Maybe you'll sleep in a little bit longer. Yeah, right? maybe. That's the plan. If you had to pick one word to describe yourself, what would it be and why? Hmm. One word. Um, the first word that comes to my mind is vivacious. Um, I, I, only because people have told me that before, but also I do feel vivacious. Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very energetic person. Uh, anything that I put that I go into, I'm going like full tilt. Like uh, years ago, I was you know interning at the Toronto International Film Festival, and it's like when I, if I had to go fetch you a coffee, like you're getting the best damn coffee of your life, and it's going to be delivered with so much joy and love, and like that's how I roll. Like no matter what the task is and what needs to happen. I'm there to give it my all and bring a certain kind of energy. So I think that's like vitality or vivaciousness. Yeah. Maybe it's not the right word. But I like. No, it words. absolutely is. Because I agree 100% <laughs> even from this short conversation. So uh, you like scream vivaciousness. Maybe that. Oh, thank you. Um, what's keeping you up at night? What is keeping you up at night these days, if anything? You know what? I'm in a I'm in a bit of a transition, and I'm actually brewing up um, a whole different version of Clutch PR, my PR company. Um, I'm building a, a course, and I want to democratize the PR 
uh, process. I kind of want to disrupt actually the PR agencies and release all the information and tell everybody how it's done. And so that's what's keeping me up at night. I'm because I'm in the middle of kind of forming it and structuring it. I often have crazy ideas. I have a journal next to my bed and uh, how I, how I get myself back to sleep is like, I'll just, you know, scribble in the journal of the thought and then it, it like relaxes me. But yeah, it would be that like the, the, the formation and the transition from a uh, traditional PR agency to something else entirely. That's really so. interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, what's your favorite place in the world? <clears throat> Whoa, I have so many favorite places. Um, this is a very tricky one. I might say Nevis. Uh, it's a little tropical island in the West Indies. Uh, my son was born there in the jungle. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we, we had a business there in St. Kitts and Nevis, their sister islands, for, for a few years. So that's probably my favorite place in the world. It's, it's just so peaceful. It's, the people are so friendly and lovely. And uh, we were also married there years ago. So we have a lot of different... Um, we have a lot of connections to that to that place yeah uh so i I would probably say any of us but i also love toronto like a million places and and i might even say my favorite place is uh the place that i'm at or the the mat when i get on the yoga mat Mm -hmm. i love being on the yoga mat so do i (laughs) it's the best yeah Um, what are three non-negotiables that have to happen in your morning routine Meditation. Uh, I just started a vigorous exercise regime, so now exercise and um, snuggling my kids. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. non-negotiables. <laughs> non-negotiables. Like you, I'm having the morning snuggle. I'm having my meditation, and I'm working out. Those yeah. are my non-negotiables. Yeah. So this is our last question, um, and this is something that we asked to all of our guests. So you might have heard it, heard it if you um, watched any other ones to the end. But uh, it, I'm interested to see what you're going to say because uh, of Nevis. But there's a small tropical island in the middle of the ocean with only one phone booth, um, no internet. And we drop you off there um, with no technology at all. And anytime you can use the phone and to call to a boat to come pick you up, how long would you last and what would you do until, until, until then? On the island. Alone. On the islands, yeah. Oh my God. I mean, I could last years. I, uh, That's I, what I thought you might say. <laughs> yeah. Like what? I'm going to build a hut. I'm finding like villagers uh, on the other side of the island. And if I don't find villagers, I'm going to bond with the monkeys. I'm going to like <laughs> grab the coconuts and eat those. I'm going to fish for my food. I'm going to dance naked and have it. a bon- bonfire. Like I'm there. I'm good. Yeah. Um, Maybe, yeah, maybe like a year to, to check it out before I like totally panic, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm a survivor. That like, there's not a lot that uh, shakes me up or stresses me out. That's the other thing about, back to your question about entrepreneurs being wired different, like thickest skin you've ever seen. Well, you grow um, it. You have to, right? Yeah. You don't have much of a choice. So yeah. 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 That's awesome. Well, yeah. Thank you. And it's interesting that last question, like how different everybody is. Cause, um, my last podcast that I did yesterday was like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh my night. God. So it's so different. And it's so interesting to see everyone's answers. Um, yeah. with so many different personalities. So thank I you. mean, I love the islands also, and I love yeah. being warm. Right. So for me, I'd be like, Oh yeah. Extended vacation. <laughs> like, exactly. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so. exactly. Um, so uh, that's all the questions that I have for you. So thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, do you have so any much. last comments that you wanted to share with our listeners? I just want to say, if you are curious about Book and Brunch, join us. It's free and uh, it's an amazing community of people who love to read um, and love to check out new places. And for you, you should host. Anybody yeah. who's curious, you can just host an event. It's a, it's, it's a great way to make a little side hustle and and bring some interesting new people into your life. So I love it. That's okay. it. So yeah. I'm going to check that out and I'm going to check yeah. out Daniela and those books. Well, 
the one that's underneath my uh, that's so wild it is wild it's very strange mm -hmm. um but yeah thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge and experience and really really happy that you came on the show total pleasure thank you so much <laughs> for having me all right well we'll okay. talk to you soon okay Daniela. okay all right bye